Yeah. Did you ever know that ELB stood for? Um, first off, I want to know um, to Keith and to Mark. Now, how did Tadie get involved in this particular project? I know you guys have worked together before in the past. How did you get Tadie involved in the project? There? Well, we'll ask Tadie then. <laughs> Yeah. How, did, how did you get involved? I'll fill in the gaps. There we go. Okay, well, first of all, uh, I met uh, Keith uh, six, seven years ago. We played together in uh, Beijing, a location there for uh, World Bank um, concert, environment concert, uh, focusing on the Green Call of China for China. Huh. And um, well, we s talked a lot about the uh, possibility of doing more together. You have the mic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I've always been. Uh, <clears throat> inspired by you know guys like Frank Zappa, you know since 1968, my former band, The Mice. Uh, sorry, The Mice. <laughs> I could see where the guy was coming from, you know, and uh, he, he doesn't give up. <laughs> He's very persistent. <laughs> what a marvelous cadenza! <laughs> <laughs> And He's now, uh, tacit? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tacit, and then a reprieve. And then a reprieve. <laughs> what a reprieve report. Uh, oh, approved report. Well, actually, I, you know, I feel very fortunate. That, but, uh, you know, I can only hope that this album, you know, Three Fates Project, inspires such a marvellous uh, younger generation of musicians. And I'll tell you something. I was actually banned from the British uh, Musicians Union for using the Moog synthesizer. Because it put so many of the orchestra people out of work, I would imagine. That, right? That's exactly what they were saying, <laughs> yes. Well, you know, right from the early 60s when I was uh, working with orchestras <coughs> along with uh, my contemporaries like Rick Wakeman, and uh, John Lord, uh, the late John Lord. Um, it, it was always our intent to bring this across to a wider audience. I think that the, the conductor John Williams with the Boston Pops Orchestra helped in sure. some way when, you know, he introduced um, pieces like uh, Star Wars, you know, oh, he obviously playing the uh, the Beethovens and all that, you know, which possibly the orchestras could actually play, you know, they knew it by heart. But I think the, the younger generation of musicians really yearn for a challenge. The whole reason for calling the band Emerson, Lake and Palmer was the fact that uh, I regarded uh, Greg Lake and Carl Palmer as, you know, wonderful um, soloists in their own right. Mm -hmm. So I, th you know, I always thought that, that you know, obviously bands don't last forever. You know, they move on, and uh, I figured that um, that that's what the name of the band should be called because I knew that Greg Lake would go on I knew that Carl Palmer would go on without me um, so that was it. <laughs> well, we brought Carl you a Paul disc and disc, disc cleaner. And yeah. <laughs> oh yeah we did, actually I did. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well there you go. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he spoke with your present. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the vinyl right here. Wow. It's the vinyl, actually in big art, like it used yeah. to be, you know. Yeah. It's, a, it, uh, it's a fashion accessory, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, Not only that, but it also functions for their medical marijuana yes. walk down to be road able to... Day, uh, <laughs> walk down the road. Uh, did you ever know that ELP stood for extra large parts? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, Say goodnight. What, what happened to them, actually? <laughs> Don't what know. happened to the LP? <laughs> There's an LP right there. <laughs> the, the, LP. I don't know. the LP. The LP. The LP. LP. Yeah, exactly. The LP. Yeah, that's the LP. <laughs>